uh, going over the gram stain, um, a little bit about uh, the technique itself, how to perform the gram stain, uh, and about uh, how it actually works, you know, uh, and comparing the gram positive and gram negative cell walls. Um, so that's just it. The, the gram stain is a technique uh, that we use to really classify um, many, most of our bacteria uh, into what we call gram positive or gram negative. Um, it doesn't mean that the cells are pink or purple, which you sometimes see on a slide. Uh, it has to do with the characteristics of the peptidoglycan layer of the cell wall. And so that's what we're going to talk about here. And I'm going to go through it as we talk about the technique itself. So the technique is, we can pretend that this is a, you know, this is a cell. And this is going to be a, what we're going to be calling a gram positive cell. And here we're going to be looking at a bit of the cell membrane and cell wall. And then over here is going to be our gram negative cell. Same thing, we're going to look at a little bit of its uh, cell membrane, cell wall. And I'll talk about the structure, which I have other lectures on, on going into them in detail, but I'll talk about what's relevant here for, um, for the stain. So when in lab, what you do is you get a slide and you prepare a slide with a bacterial smear and then you have to fix the bacteria on the slide. So um, that should be something else that you're covering um, in a different place, uh, exactly how you're doing that. Uh, but the idea is you have a glass slide. And then, I don't think that looks right. Um, yeah, this would just go like that. Okay. Uh, and then on the slide, you typically put a circle like this representing different organisms. So you would put a, a control here for a gram positive. So a known organism. Uh, over here, you would put a control for the gram negative organism. And then here is where you would put you know, your unknown organism that you actually want to stain in the middle. It's important that you would set up your slide this way, uh, partly because the gram stain is really an experiment. Um, if your iodine isn't working, um, you'll get an incorrect reading. Um, if you happen to use the wrong stain, uh, you won't get the, the correct result. Um, if you decolorize or wash too long, which I'll talk about, um, you won't get the right result. Or if you don't wash long enough, you won't get the right result. The only way to know whether you actually did it correct uh, is to have control organisms on the slide that turn out the way that you expect. That if the gram negative control looks gram negative at the end, we'll talk about what that actually looks like, um, that means at least part of it was done right. If the gram-positive organism also looks correct, the way a gram-positive should look, then it's most likely your stain was done correctly, and whatever this unknown organism is, you would trust it. You would trust to say, oh yeah, that, I'm saying it's a gram-positive organism, my positive control looks positive, my negative control looks negative, I'm confident that, that that was done properly. You put one organism on a slide and do a gram stain, uh, it's unlikely, well, I mean, it's possible you can do it correctly, but I wouldn't trust uh, those results. So you put them on there, you're going to let them air dry, you heat fix, again that's a separate uh, explanation of what those processes are, but I'm talking about, about that, the uh, why or how the technique works. The primary stain is going to be crystal violet. And so they're all washed with crystal violet, everything is washed with crystal violet. And the crystal violet will, and I'm talking about over here, I'll put, uh, so this is the crystal violet. I'm going to use the pink actually over here. Uh, the crystal violet dye particles will go into the layer here, which is going to be our peptidoglycan layer. And a recent study of uh, microscopy and the movement of the dye has shown that um, the crystal violet gets into the periplasm as well. So it's our space between the, the cell wall and cell membrane. But it doesn't get into the cell. So over here, we would have the cytoplasm of the cell. The crystal violet does not get into the cytoplasm. That's what a, a 2015 
2015 study uh, demonstrated that uh, doesn't happen. Uh, some other stains do get into the cytoplasm. So malachite green uh, done in the endospore stain, that gets into the cytoplasm, but the crystal violet does not. Over here, this is our gram negative organism. Now, it's a little bit different. You see here we have peptidoglycan, right? And then we would have our, and both of these, it's the cell membrane. So phospholipid layer with proteins and other molecules associated with it. Um, and then we have our paraplasm, right? But then what we have for the uh, gram-negative organism is a second phospholipid bilayer. And the reason we have that is because the peptidoglycan layer is very thin. And really by comparison to my drawing, this one should really be much, th much thicker if we're really gonna have an actual size comparison. Um, but you get the idea that this one is thin, this one is thick, this one would actually be far, far thicker than, uh, than I'm drawing it. So same thing, stained with crystal violet, the crystal violet molecules will come in, they'll pass this phospholipid bilayer, they'll go into the paraplasm, binding with uh, crystal violet, sorry, crystal violet will get in here with the um, peptidoglycan and some here. Now what's gonna happen next is you add a mordant. Okay, the mordant, in this case, is going to bind to crystal violet, and this is iodine. I refer to it as Graham's iodine, which is sort of the concentration of iodine really that, that's used. Um, and what happens is that those molecules, the iodine here, comes in, and the iodine binds to the crystal violet molecules and makes a larger complex. So it's going to happen in both situations. You get the, and again, same thing here. It does not get in the cytoplasm. Um, iodine could get in the cytoplasm, but the crystal violet, crystal violet doesn't here. Um, so crystal violet iodine form a complex. Now. You're going to wash. You might wash with water as far as your technique goes, but our wash here is a uh, really what we call a decolorizing agent. And it's ethanol, right, ethyl alcohol. So now this is really the, the whole test of the gram stain is at this point here, because see for both types of cells, for gram-positive cells and gram-negative cells, they'll both be stained with crystal violet. What happens is when you're washing those cells, the alcohol, okay, uh, I'm not going to try to draw the molecules, but the, the alcohol here uh, will try to move into the area of the peptidoglycan and wash out the crystal violet iodine molecules. Except the thing is, these molecules are have formed a larger complex than each of them as an individual. And because of the, the dense matrix structure of the peptidoglycan, they're not escaping and they're trapped in there. Over here, what's gonna happen is there's a very, very thin peptidoglycan. And when the ethanol comes in, starts to punch holes in this outer layer of the, the, the second phospholipid bilayer. And so those little crystal violet the crystal violet iodine complexes you know, are washing out of the paraplasm. Okay, they're washing out of that space. Now, there might be some associated with this very thin peptidoglycan layer, but again, because it is so thin, the ethanol then ends up typically removing most of them. So what happens in the end is that this cell loses all of its color. So the gram-positive cells and gram-negative cells originally look purple after doing crystal violet iodine. When you decolorize with ethanol, 
the ethanol cannot remove this larger complex from the denser peptidoglycan, but from the very thin peptidoglycan and phospholipid layer, the ethanol washes away the dye. Right, so the complex is removed and it loses its color and becomes colorless. So now we wouldn't be able to see those cells at all. So we need what we call the secondary stain or sometimes called a counter stain. And in this case, it is safranin. They all get washed with safranin as well. So you would be washing the whole entire slide. I mean, so every, and everything's treated the same. So when you do crystal violet, it's the whole slide. When you do iodine, it's the whole slide. When you rinse with alcohol, it's just the whole slide. And now even when you're doing the counter stain, you still are gonna do the whole slide. So controls and unknown all treated exactly the same. So uh, it is their proper controls. That's done and then it's rinsed off. These cells will just get the, pick up the safranin so they can just, you can see them under the microscope and they would end up looking pink. Um, the color itself has nothing to do with the chemical characteristics of the cell. That has to do with the dyes that we chose, right? The cells in this case don't, don't have any color. We're adding this color to them and, and it lets us differentiate between the two types of cell walls based on what color we see visibly then under the microscope. So if the cells up here purple, that just means that they have a thick peptidoglycan layer and held on to the crystal violet iodine. Uh, if they appear pink, that means they had a really thin peptidoglycan layer and they couldn't hold on to it and it ended up being all washed away. So we only are seeing this counter stain called safranin. Those are the basics. Um, again, the, the technique itself, in, in general, people have some variations. Usually after you heat fix the slide, uh, the crystal violet is applied for a minute I'll often uh, pour off the crystal violet and then add the iodine. That goes on for another minute. And then we can pour that off uh, or you could just do a quick water wash if you just wanna be tidy about it. You don't have to. The, the main thing is this uh, alcohol wash and how long you actually wash with alcohol. Um, I tell students that when you're washing the slide with alcohol, first off, you can't do it from one end. You have to do it across the slide evenly back and forth at the same time, you're, so you're hitting everything equally. And then you're just really watching the gram negative side because you know that that's a neg gram negative organism and you know it's the control. So it should lose the crystal violet and become colorless. At that point, that's when you would stop. All right, so how long is that? Uh, it's, there isn't a specific time because everyone tends to make their bacterial smears at a different density. Uh, especially new students in the class make the smears way too dense uh, and it actually takes a very long time to decolorize. Um, so you'll get a lot of artificial um, gram, neg gram, positive, uh, gram negative cells will look gram positive because you won't be able to wash out all the dye because the cells are so dense. So you really just need to pay attention to how long you're washing and what's going on with that gram negative control. All right, so uh, I usually do it just till uh, when the gram negative is clear. And then the safran and counter stain, that's also one minute. And then we usually do a little water wash just to, again, to clean everything off and then you blot it and then you can actually look at your slide. So, um, this relates to your knowledge of the structure of the um, cell wall. So it's something that you should you know, tie into that information.